Hi, this is Terry Vanoy. Welcome into my online classroom math class with Terry V. This is the second in the series of videos on factoring polynomials. Let's take a look. This is problem set one as we factor out the GCF greatest common factor of each expression. Now notice that these are all binomials. Okay, we'll take a look in the next video with trinomials and a little more complicated expressions. But I would like to work the first two out with you here. And um, then have you try three, four, and five on your own. You'd hit pause, try it on a piece of paper, and then come back and check. All right, now first of all, number one, you notice that um, both are negative terms, okay? That's a clue right now that you're gonna pull the negative sign out, okay? In other words, you're gonna have a negative one as an outside factor, but look at the rest. What's the largest factor, greatest common factor, out of each term. Well, not only three, but think bigger. How about nine? And notice there's no x on this second term, so it's just going to be a nine. In fact, it's a negative nine. Okay? Now, if I take a negative one factor out, in other words, negative sign in front of my GCF there, notice that that would make both terms positive. So, negative nine times what gives you negative nine x? Well, that would just leave an x. Yep, very good. Negative 9 divided into negative 45 will give you a positive 5, okay? So you want to check your answer by distributive property and multiplying. So negative 9 times x, negative 9x. Negative 9 times negative, or positive 5 would be negative 45. All right, so you have a monomial on the outside multiplied by a binomial, okay? Now, anytime you're talking about factoring, you know you're going to be grouping something, so go ahead and put your parentheses in. And then look at each term, a 5n and a 30. Yep, a 5 would be the largest, in fact, the only factor I can take out. That would leave me on the inside with an n plus what? Right, plus 6, because 5 times n is 5n, 5 times 6 is 30. All right, take a piece of paper, hit pause, and you try 3, 4, and 5 and check back. All right, I hope that you're back from pausing this video and you've tried 3, 4, and 5. Here we go. 4 times negative 3a is negative 12a. Very good. That's your first part. 4 times 4 is, of course, 16. And notice the signs need to match. All right? Negative 3p squared times 10p squared. Notice p squared times p squared is p to the fourth. You're going to add the exponents. And negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. So you got the first term correct. All right, what about negative 3p squared times 3? That would be negative 9p squared. And the negative sign is included right there. It looks like a subtraction or a negative sign. It's the same thing. And finally, number 5, when you multiply it out to check, notice that it works. Negative 10x times 4, negative 40x. And negative 10x times positive 7x to the fourth that x on the outside is x to the first, that's x to the fourth. When you multiply, that gives you x to the fifth. So, always use distributive property and go backwards to check your answer in a factoring. All right, look for the next video, which will be a little bit more challenging.